Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with Teddy, trying to film ads for some innovative products he wants to launch. He starts with stretch bands, a plastic suit to raise the temperature while working out, and a bar which can adjust to your desired height. Safe to say, all these ideas backfire despite Teddy's dedication and passion. We then jump to a car driving through the Utah desert. It stops outside a cabin, and a man gets out. A man waiting inside is called an assassin known simply as, the man from Toronto, to get information out of a guy he has taken captive. Toronto arrives, and right off the bat starts off as being very intimidating. The captive tries not to be phased, but as Toronto heats up his knife and starts talking about flaying the man's various body parts, the guy gives up the information. Toronto then leaves, and the guy who had called him shoots the captive. We then go back to Teddy, who wishes his wife a happy birthday, and tells her that he is taking her to a cabin to treat her. Lori loves her husband very much, and tries to tell him not to Teddy things up, a term that her colleagues use when a screw-up happens. Teddy is offended at his name being used as such, but also accepts that he has been causing a lot of screw-ups. Lori encourages him to propose his business idea to his boss Marty, and Teddy says he will do it that day. Teddy heads off to work, handing pamphlets out to everyone he passes. He arrives at the gym he works at, and shares his idea of non-contact boxing with his boss. Teddy's boss is very unimpressed, and calls it the stupidest idea ever. He also berates him for not designing the pamphlets correctly, as Teddy forgot to add the address and phone number on them. Marty tells Teddy that he's a nice guy, but he needs someone with grit, and fires him, also dumping his business proposal in the trash. Meanwhile, Toronto arrives at his house in Toronto, and we see he has a very cool modern place with a cherry blossom tree in the center. As he starts on his breakfast, he gets a call from someone called the handler. As he cooks up a fancy breakfast for himself, the handler tells him of a rare deal which will pay $2 million, which gets his attention. She tells him to head to Onancock, Ontario, and gives him a cabin number. Back to Teddy, he and Lori also arrive in Onancock for their vacation, and Teddy drops off his wife for a day in the spa, while he goes to set things up in the cabin. But due to his previous negligence, he misreads the number of the cabin and arrives at the wrong one. The guy inside mistakes Teddy for Toronto, and also misinterprets Teddy's box of naughty stuff for an assassin's tools. Teddy is being himself, and the misunderstanding keeps up until the thug takes him into the basement, and Teddy is forced to get information from their victim. Teddy freaks out and tries to run, but the thugs don't let him. Teddy catches on fast to what is going on, and tries to act as if he really is Toronto himself. He starts to intimidate the captive, but also whispers to him the truth, saying that he should give up the info, so that both of them can walk out of there. Teddy's ruse proves successful, and he gets the information from the guy. The head thug sends the obtained info to some colonel, but before they can do much else, a flash grenade is dropped in the basement, and the wall is torn away. Revealing to us that the entire cabin area is surrounded by the FBI. Teddy is also captured and taken in, but they quickly realize that Teddy cannot be the man from Toronto. But they cannot let him go, because the thug in the cabin who had let Teddy in, had taken a picture of Teddy and sent it to Marin. Marin is the former Venezuelan Colonel Sebastian Marin, whose plans to overthrow his country's government were destroyed by US intelligence, and since then he has sworn revenge. The agents explain to Teddy, Marin and his wife are planning something, but they don't know what, and Toronto was their best hope of getting in. They want Teddy to continue posing as Toronto, and get close to Marin, so they can get the information they want. But Teddy is not interested, and just wants to get back to his wife and her birthday celebrations. They convince him that an agent named Santoro will look after his wife, and keep her distracted with shopping etc. But Santoro is too good looking, and Teddy does not feel comfortable. He negotiates that they cover his debts to get his cooperation. He tells his wife that he has a presentation that Marty wants him to attend, and that he'll meet her tomorrow in DC. Toronto, in the meantime sneaks onto the crime scene at the cabin, and finds the receipt with Teddy's name and details on it. He hacks into his account and finds his workout videos, thoroughly unimpressed by Teddy. He talks to his handler and they discuss what to do next. He tracks Teddy down, as the agents bring him to meet with Daniela, the colonel's wife. Instead of meeting Marin, Daniela has her men take Teddy with them to a hangar. Toronto gets into the agent's car and forces him to follow the SUVs. Teddy ends up on a plane heading to Puerto Rico, as Toronto infiltrates the plane midair, and reveals himself as the man they were looking for. They do not believe Toronto, and still think Teddy is the real assassin. Toronto then proves himself by killing Marin's men. He also saves Teddy after they both nearly fall out of the plane, they land in a field, and start making their way out on foot after the plane explodes. The handler contacts Toronto, 
and berates him for not killing Teddy, because they're not supposed to leave any witnesses alive. But Toronto also needs Teddy because Marin believes that he is Toronto. Toronto tells Teddy they need to find someone named Mr. Green, and bring him to Marin. Next we shift to a golf course in Miami. A man in a pink shirt gets off of a golf cart, and approaches two men. He introduces himself as the man from Miami, and proceeds to kill one of the men with his golf stick. The other man makes a run for it, as Miami gets a call from the handler. She tells him to go to Puerto Rico for a $2 million payday. He agrees as he transforms his golf stick into a rifle, and shoots the running witness. Teddy and Toronto arrive in Puerto Rico, and Toronto tries his best to teach Teddy how to act and dress, to make people believe that he is Toronto. They arrive at the tech conference, and Teddy is taken to a room where four men are held captive. The thug in charge tells him that one of these men is green, and he needs to find out who it is, and take him to Marin in Washington. Toronto guides Teddy on what to do to intimidate the men as best he can, with his actions and knives. Teddy does his best to keep up the act, but as he is waving around one of the knives, he accidentally cuts a man underneath his eye. This makes him sick and he pukes all over the man, and then another. Making the real Mr. Green confess. However, the thugs notice that Teddy is wearing an earpiece, and are about to attack him, when Toronto arrives and kills them all. They ask Green why Marin needs him, and he tells them how he worked in DARPA, where they made seismic explosives. They are untraceable, and make the blast seem like a subterranean tremor. He tells them, two years ago his former boss, General Hansen asked for their help with a top secret project for an unnamed client. This client was Marin. And he needs Green, because one of the two fail saves for the explosive he needs, is Green's thumbprint. And he plans to use this explosive, to blow up the Venezuelan embassy in Washington. Toronto cuts the guy's thumb off, much to Teddy's disgust and repulsion, and they head off to Washington. Teddy is still needed to deliver the thumb, but he refuses. Amidst their argument, Miami attacks them. A fight ensues, and Teddy is thrown onto some fixtures. Toronto manages to get rid of Miami for the time being, and stitches up Teddy, who got shot in the ass. He gets a call from the handler and gives her an update, but Teddy notices that she lied to Toronto. Toronto doesn't believe this, and they head on towards DC. On the flight, Teddy tries to tell Toronto that he read his file, and feels sorry for the things he had to go through as a child, but Toronto gets defensive, and tells him that Teddy got himself in this mess, not because he forgot to change the toner on his printer, but because he's a coward who doesn't do anything he says he will. That night, they go for dinner with Lori, who has brought a date for Toronto. Anne is Lori's friend from college, and she and Toronto hit it off. The FBI has been keeping track of Teddy, and realizes that he is with Toronto. Teddy notices Miami arriving, and they leave. Miami corners them in a storage room, and takes the thumb from them. The handler being behind Miami is also revealed. Teddy and Toronto steal a police car and drive to the Marin meet. Toronto tells Teddy, how in Minnesota, he didn't kill his target, because he had a little kid waiting for him in the car. And then that man he set free went on a rampage, which Toronto blames himself for. He says that now he doesn't want to kill anyone, just take the money and maybe open a restaurant. Miami and the handler meanwhile deliver the thumb to Marin, but Teddy crashes the deal. Pretending to be Toronto, even though the handler insists that it is not him. It is revealed that the thumb doesn't work, and the FBI arrives to capture Marin. Toronto runs with the money, while Miami and the handler escape. The FBI discovers that the thumb actually belonged to Marin's henchman, as Randy chose not to let Marin arm the weapon. Teddy returns home to find Lori has gone to stay with her mother, having learned that he lost his job and lied to her. Racing to stop her, he is attacked and almost killed by Miami, but Toronto arrives to save Teddy. They fight off several other assassins summoned by the handler. The handler shows up and demands the money, which is in the trunk of Toronto's beloved car. After a chase, where the handler fires grenades at Teddy and Toronto, they end up at a factory. The handler corners the two at gunpoint, but Teddy pulls a lever, and drops the hander into a boiling hot vat, where she burns to death. Teddy is confronted by a final assassin, the man from Tokyo, but Toronto dispatches him with Deborah, his beloved 1969 Dodge Charger. Taking the car, Teddy reconciles with Lori at the train station, but accidentally parks on the tracks, and the car is destroyed by an oncoming train. This makes the money fly around, as the FBI arrives to tackle him. A year later, Teddy and Lori are expecting a baby. Toronto has followed through on his dream of opening his own restaurant, and is in a relationship with Anne. Teddy declares Toronto his partner in his new online gym, presenting him with a small payment toward replacing Deborah, but Toronto later calls him to threaten him. The end. Thank you for watching. 
Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.